This video is very United States centric. I'm not saying that the things that I say in this video can't apply to other places, but for the most part, this video is United States centric. The left tends to react very poorly to conflict, and when they're on the losing side, they tend to act like children and can become physically confrontational and extremely reactionary. But as far as policy, they're usually well thought out, and they try to consider as many sides as possible. They try to make sure they consider as many demographics as possible. Their policies usually at least try to think about the public and not just corporations. Don't get me wrong, uh, the Democrats can be pretty corporatist. I think both parties are pretty corporatist, but I think the right has the left beat on that sort of thing. Now, when it comes to the right, the right reacts really well to conflict. And when they're on the losing side, they rarely physically react and usually resort to just insults as a negative response. But when it comes to policy, they're very reactionary and they don't really try to consider any sides but their own, which is generally very monolithic and quasi-traditional, often based somewhere within the last 30 years. And so when there's a conflict, the right wing looks level-headed, rational, calm, collected, and victorious. And many people feel they're completely entitled to be as smug and condescending as they can towards the childish left. But let's look at issues and policies, shall we? So, okay, until we have reasonable alternatives like artificial wombs, abortions are going to happen whether they're legal or not. The left's reaction to abortion is that it's a horrible thing, but it's better to be done in a safer way than to be done in some back room where tragedy can happen. The right's reaction to abortion is that it's wrong, it goes against God's word, it's killing another human being, and therefore the practice must be banned regardless of the consequences. The left's reaction to teenage pregnancies is to educate people about safe sex and offer condoms. The right's reaction to teenage pregnancies is to introduce official shaming programs designed to dissuade teenagers from having sex. Remember, this isn't the 1980s. This is right now. This is what the Republican Party is pushing now, currently. The left's reaction to illegal immigration is to try to make it a little bit easier to become a legal citizen and to help out those who were brought here as children. The right's reaction to illegal immigration is to round people up, separate children from their families, and hold them in detention camps with no real plan, decent plan, on how to get them back together, and then declaring that none of this would happen if you just had that wall. Oh. You're, you're against the wall? You're against the detention camps? Well, speak up. Actually say something negative about Trump. Or you just can't do that because that would be agreeing with mainstream media. You can't do that. Nope, you'd rather tell people they have Trump derangement syndrome every time they complain or mention something negative about what the Trump administration is doing. Personally, I would rather deal with people who are acting like spoiled children when they don't get their way, but usually pass reasonable legislation that tries to help everyone out, as many people as they can out. You know, I'd rather deal with that than deal with peaceful people who pass often reactionary legislation that's generally thoughtless towards those it hurts, and then legislation that promotes corporatism and corporate welfare and they want to legislate morality. Yeah, I'd rather deal with the childish people throwing a tantrum than the people that actually want to fuck everything up. The right wing really hasn't changed that much since the 80s. They've mainly just been laying low in hopes that the left will finally do something that is crazy enough that the right wing can, can look victorious. And because of how badly the left has been reacting to a lot of this stuff, the right wing is looking like the sane, calm, collected ones. 
they're looking like the good guys. But people are failing to realize that it's the same old Republicans with the same religious dogma-inspired, anti-science, hierarchy-worshipping, obey authority, wives and children are pampered property kind of mindset. And yes, some SJWs are pushing for some anti-science things themselves, particularly when it comes to some gender issues, and it's worthwhile to criticize. Yes, even some of the religious right-wingers are criticizing them for being anti-science. However, those same right-wingers will argue against science when it's something that clashes with their beliefs. Even the position that Republicans tend to take on the environment often, but not always, come from religious beliefs that everything was put here by God for our amusement. Remember, these people are in office and have power. But you know, go ahead and fall for it. Believe that the right wing are the open-minded, tolerant ones because they react calmly in conflict. Forget about their beliefs. The way they carry themselves is much more important. If they say they're open-minded, that means they're open-minded. Someone who believes that gay people are going to burn in hell for eternity can claim that they're open-minded. Oh, I'm open-minded. Someone can, uh... <laughs> someone could essentially say, you know, and I'm not saying that, I, that, that there's a bunch of people pushing this, but someone could say, well, yeah, I think a woman's place is in the kitchen, but I'm not sexist. Well, they say they're not sexist, therefore they're, they're not. Yeah, no, they're right, they're right wing, they're the tolerant ones. They're the, they're the, uh, they're the non-judgmental tolerant ones. And they're there for the underdog, right? They're there for the minorities, right? Oh, they're not? No, they're not. They're for the majority. But they like it when minorities and disenfranchised and marginalized groups uh, support them. They like that. They think that's great. It's like, wow, we don't even have to, to, to say or do anything in support. And But yeah, but all this is the ultimate in tone policing. Don't pay attention to the message if it's said in a way that you don't like. Let's take Big Red, for instance. You know, the, the red-headed feminist who says, Shut the fuck up and listen for just a moment! Right? Just take her, for instance. If people actually listened to what she was saying, she was actually agreeing with the MRAs. But because she said it in a toxic way, you weren't willing to listen. And yet some of you who won't listen to her because of her tone, you won't listen to a number of other SJWs because of their tone, you won't listen to a number of people because of their tone, and yet you expect progressives to put up with empty insults, continuous empty insults from sometimes thousands of people, insults that are purely designed to hurt. And if these people block those kinds of comments or block the people from making those kinds of comments. Oh, they're destroying your free speech and they just want echo chambers. Sure. Yeah, that, that's how that works, right? Do as I say, not as I do. Tone policing for one side and not the other, right? So as I've said in recent videos, Go ahead and show me some liberals who want the government to control the way people live. Show me some liberals trying to make the government get into your church, your bedroom, your sex life. You could say, oh, my business. Well, your, your business that's open to the public is not your personal life. It's a business that's regulated. If you think you should be able to run your business like it's, like people are coming into your personal home or something like that, you know, you don't want any regulations. You want to be able to fire and hire people for completely arbitrary bullshit reasons. Kick customers out that you just don't like for arbitrary reasons. Whatever, you know. Well, to you it might not be arbitrary, but to everyone else it might look that way, you know. But if you don't like that businesses can't be run like it's in a third world country, then maybe you should just be blunt that you think that the... Civil Rights Acts since 1964 should essentially be repealed. Why not just be blunt about it? And if you support that, you're obviously all right with businesses being as sexist, racist, homophobic, you name it, as they want. I'm not saying that you are that way. I'm saying that you 
support businesses being able to be that way. And I know what the next argument will be. It'll be that, well, you know, if if we allow businesses to just discriminate, uh, the market, the free market will will take care of, of businesses that actually do that. And, and we won't see the discrimination. And I'm thinking to myself, are you fucking kidding me? Especially with the polarized environment we have now? You know who we would, do, would be probably doing the most of the kicking people out, you know, not wanting certain kinds of customers, you know who would be doing it the most? Probably the left. MAGA hat? Bye. White guy in an All Lives Matter shirt? Bye. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'd probably see it from the left the most, to the most extremes. Now this sort of could lead someone to say, well, doesn't that mean the left is less tolerant? You could say that, particularly if you're judging all intolerance equally. Um, one of the big problems is that sometimes people are seeing intolerance where there is none. But it's also sometimes hard to tell the difference between... Like, I think a lot of, a lot of Trump supporters are trolls. But considering that the left will go after their own for not being tolerant enough, yeah, one could say that the left are the more intolerant ones, I suppose. But that's only if all intolerance is created equal. I think intolerance of intolerance is justified. I'm sorry, it's, that's how I feel. If, uh, if, there is a, if there is a view or a belief that is truly intolerant, I think it's not unreasonable to be intolerant of intolerant beliefs, so. If someone says they hate gay people, if the person next to them says, well, I hate mindsets that hate gay people, do you think both of their hatred is equal? Do you think it's equally justified? If someone says, I hate hateful people, is that person hateful? But as I said, the biggest problem is when people see intolerance where there is none. You know, when people see hate where there is none. When people are seeing microaggressions everywhere and then start treating people as if everyone is racist, sexist, homophobic, and just they're, they're everyone is against you. Yeah, if, if someone starts treating people like that, yeah, that's, that's crap. And there are groups of people who are acting as though society is trying to be this nasty thing and it's just like no that's that's not how that works most people are trying to be decent people most people are trying not to be racist not to be sexist not to be a number of of uh, bigoted things um they're trying maybe people don't know how but most people know that once you become old enough to see differences between people even if they seem trivial that we have to use our minds to look past our instincts to be rather xenophobic. You know, we're going to have those tendencies naturally, so we have to use our minds to get past that. So when there are people that are working hard to try to look past the sometimes their upbringing, sometimes just situational things that people like, you, you see something over and over again, and it builds up in your mind, but you know that that's not the way it is all the time, and you have to remind yourself that's not the way it is all the time. When you take people that are working hard to try to rid themselves of some of these things, and you go around telling them that they're terrible people, yeah, it's going to backfire, okay? It's, it's not going to work. And that's, that's something that's very shitty that I'm seeing coming from the the more extreme end of the left you know you, you guys got to knock that off you know you got to give people credit for for at least trying to do what they can to to rid themselves of racism sexism homophobia wh whatever okay people are trying people are trying to be better people for the most part this isn't everyone this isn't everyone i'm just saying that there are there are i'd say the vast majority of people are trying to be better people Someone saying, ha ha, Trump is president and there's nothing you fruitcakes can do about it. Yeah, that's trying to bring out hate in other people. 
Now, someone just wearing a Trump hat doesn't make them a hateful person or an intolerant person. They might be a troll. They might be serious. But just wearing that doesn't make someone an, an intolerant, hateful person. But there are those out there who are treating people who wear a Trump hat as if they are. I mean, I understand why they do, but it's just as hard as it is to, as I'm talking about, of, of not, of having to rid ourselves of bigoted things, um, people are going, are going to have to learn to not completely hate Trump supporters, you know, um, and just go with a mindset of, well, Trump supporters don't seem to realize what they're really supporting. And if you try to tell them, they'll say that it's fake news. So um, they're just, there are just, there are some people that are completely, and there's also people that are completely in this cult, like, thing with, with Trump. Anyway. Now, if someone opens their mouth and basically says they support everything the Trump administration has said and done, including the, including the detention camps, then, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to state that that's kind of a hateful ideology. Trump ideology is that whole thing that I've talked about before, the idea that uh, immigrants are the biggest problem, you know, somehow that they're taking, oh, they're taking all the good jobs, no, they're taking the jobs that nobody wants. Oh, but they're on welfare. No, they're not going to get on welfare when they're, they're undocumented. You know, the few that do, are, are you really, you're, you're just that upset over this few that do like that? Come on. The Patriot prayer rallies are purely designed to inflame. They can make all the virtue signaling they want. They know damn well what they're doing with that. They know even what the, the name Patriot Prayer. Some of it is, you know, if you don't agree with us, you're not a patriot. Other part of it is bringing prayer into it. Other parts of it is sort of combining uh, Trump support with religion, and, and that terrifies people. And they know this. They know that terrifies people. That's some of why they do it. It's essentially a declaration that God wants Trump to be president and they're going to stand behind God. They're the ultimate rallies for that mindset of obey and respect. Obey and respect God. Obey and respect Trump. Obey and respect the police. Obey and respect authority. Make America great again. Respect authority again. That's the message. And that's why it's interpreted by many people as being a fascist message. Whether that's actually fascism is debatable, but it's clear to see what they're pushing. This whole obey authority and obey God crap is not something to, I'm sorry, it's, it's not something to tolerate. If, if, if you personally want to live a, a particular way, you want to live according to your beliefs, fine. But when you start pushing this, this idea that, well, unless you're, you march along step with you, then you're not a real patriot, and, and yeah, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. But making people angry is the goal. They want to be able to play the victim when they, when they get attacked. Should they be attacked? No. But, but people understand this whole left-right dichotomy and how it works. Left-wingers are being used by these Trump tards. The Trump tards know how the left will react, and they're having a grand old time with it, knowing that it's bringing people to their side. This is the point when the left is like a little kid jumping up and down and throwing a tantrum because he doesn't know how to respond to bullying. You have two or more bullies tossing the kid's belongings back and forth between them, laughing more and more hysterically the more crazy and unhinged the kid gets. And the kid just can't understand that if he stops being angry and stops throwing a tantrum, the bullies have nothing to bully over. The bullies will have no reason to do what they're doing. The left needs to stop reacting this way, and the right needs to stop tossing the kid's belongings back and forth between them. But we know that neither of those things are going to happen. Nobody's going to stop. This is the right's golden hour here in the United States. This is how the right sucks people into their ideology by making fun of the left when they act crazy when they think they've been cornered. The right can essentially say, see, we're not that bad, just look how crazy the left is. When of course none of this has to do with policy. 
And that's what they're counting on. They're counting on the fact that people aren't paying attention to policy. Pay attention to how crazy the left is acting. Don't pay attention to policy. Don't pay attention to the ideology that's being spread. Just because the right wing is nice about it doesn't mean that their ideology isn't shit. But you know, if people talk about Republican policies, they get told they have Trump derangement syndrome in an attempt to continue this crazy cycle, in an attempt to make the left-winger so angry that they'll just state something emotional and completely lacking in logic and reason. That's the goal. Right now, the goal of the right and those who are apologetic to the right and those who are doing the work of the right is to try to make left people so angry that they become completely irrational and unhinged. That's the goal. And right now, y'all are on a roll. And it's just sad that so many people have been sucked into this, not really realizing what they're actually supporting until they're being called alt-right or alt-light or just right-wing. And then you're like, I'm not those things. I'm not those things. Well, if all you fucking do is make fun of the left, they're going to think you're on the right. That's how that works. Funny how that works, isn't it? And these few times someone makes fun of Republicans, you get all up in arms. But yeah, if, if all you do is criticize the left, people are going to think you're on the right. It, it's, it's, it's pretty basic. But, you know, people are just all up in arms. Oh, they're, they're, being, they're being lumped in with the alt-right. We'll stop saying their arguments and not ever defending the left and never saying anything about the right. Well, they're not acting crazy. So that means their ideology is okay. No. They're the ones that are in power right now, aren't they? Aren't they the ones that we should be worried about? So some people have got been getting angry that they're being lumped in this way, and some people are just kind of laughing at it and then just continuing to say, they're calling me that? <laughs> Look at the left. Yeah, I think one example recently is some black guy. And now from several people, amongst the left-hating crowd, we're now seeing the argument, anything the left wants is Stalinism, or is the mechanisms that lead to Stalinism. I mean, I suppose the left deserves it, since there are many on the left that are pretty much saying that anything the right wants is fascism. I don't think the right actually wants fascism, but I don't think they really understand the nature of their positions and what it, what it perpetuates. There are indeed some people on the left who are pushing for some things that could lead to Stalinism. But they're powerless. They can act like terrorists all they want. And we're not going to just suddenly give them a bunch of power. We're not going to give terrorists the key to the city. We're not going to make them an honorary politician for causing the most damage. We're not going to suddenly put them in a position of passing laws because they just did something terrible. They committed a crime. Yes, terrorists do terrorize and they do cause damage. But beyond the actual damage they do, they only have as much power as we give them. There have been many protests that have essentially become terrorism, and some of these I think they should be treated as such. On a side note, I strongly believe in the freedom of association and freedom of speech. I think the, ma the overwhelming majority of Americans feel the same. There are very few Americans who don't agree. I don't see anyone except some really extreme fringe people, fringe individuals, who are arguing that the government should take away our freedom of association or freedom of speech. Some people like those in Antifa may try to use vigilanteism to take away your speech, but that's not the same thing. They have committed a crime. Their power is localized to your direct vicinity. It's not a law. It doesn't affect anyone else. It's awful and someone should be able to press charges for it, and in many cases I think it should be able to be considered terrorism. If you're honestly saying that Antifa has taken away your First Amendment rights by being violent, then couldn't every time anyone in any situation gets attacked or punched or something, couldn't they state that they just had their freedom of speech violated? Come on now. Another thing, I don't think employers should be able to force ideological propaganda down the throats of the employees. I also don't think people should be able to be fired for having unpopular opinions. Unless someone is saying something bad about the company they work for, or are saying something awful to the customer, 
or are saying something in the name of the company they work for? Yeah, other than those things, the opinions someone holds should have no bearing on whether they're able to keep a job. It would take some serious regulations to take care of this. Unfortunately, many on the right would not support such regulations. They'd rather play the victim and then complain about it so they can blame the left for everything they hate. And unfortunately, there are some people on the left who think that all of this ideological propaganda that they're pushing in workplaces is totally okay. They're, they're totally cool with it. I put it on the same lines as pushing religious propaganda in the workplace. Just let people do their jobs. Give them training in the actual things they're supposed to be doing on the job. Anyway.